Good evening, everybody. It's Mike with Alpha Shark. It is Thursday, 24th of January. We're doing a webinar tonight, and it's on the China trade we visited. So, guys, um, I did a, a China trade presentation to you guys back in November, and I thought this was a good time to go back and revisit it because we're kind of in the heat of it, aren't we? Right? Everybody noticed how the market's gyrate and fire on any time the word China is mentioned by anybody out there? You guys picked up on that the last week and a half or so? So this felt like a good time to go over it because I don't know if I'll get to talk to you guys again before something big happens. So if you want to get a hold of me, you can email me at Mike at smartoptiontrading.com on Twitter at options Mike highly recommend you follow me on Twitter and on YouTube because I post a lot of stuff out there that's for free. So if you're interested in keeping track of what I'm doing and stuff like that, uh, I do post a ton of stuff out there that's not, you know, that you don't have to be a subscriber for. Obviously, nothing like my subscribers get. But, you know, uh, I always try to help you guys out as best I can. So tonight's um, presentation, I really would like to make as interactive as possible. So let's go through our risk disclaimer. Day trading, short-term trading, options trading, and futures trading are extremely risky undertakings. They generally are not appropriate for someone with limited capital, little or no trading experience, and or a low, and or a low tolerance for risk. Never execute a trade unless you can afford to and are prepared to lose your entire investment. All trading operations involve serious risk, and you can lose your entire investment. No trades are recommendations or advice, and we cannot be sued for losses of capital. All trades are for educational purposes only. Contact your broker or RIA for execution of margin and other capital requirements. Everyone watching this presentation here, so all disclaimers at alphashark.com and myself, Mike Pisani. All right, important stuff out of the way. So today, trading the China bounce, jump bounce, market sentiment, and your chart. Sorry, guys, it's been a long day. I've already done another presentation tonight, and I'm a little bit wiped out. Um, normally, I'd have institutional flow in this. There's no institutional flow here, guys, that I would recommend to you guys. Uh, people in my service, they know. Have I been recommended? I have not been recommending much in the way of flow lately in terms of anything other than day trading momentum stuff. The long-term stuff here has been pretty, pretty crappy lately. It's mostly earnings-based. Why? Because, hey, we're in earnings season. So nothing unusual here. This is kind of the, the, the norm here. All right. Trading the China bounce. So two months ago in November, we talked about this, right? This was ahead of what? Does anybody remember why we talked about this two months ago? Nobody? Two months ago, mid-November, why were we talking about China? What was coming up? Right, the trade war. But what specifically was the catalyst at that point? Not the tariffs, Don, but what did we have? We had the G20, right? The G20 summit. Remember that? The, tweet, the G20 two months ago in mid-November, right? We had the G20 summit coming. And we knew that um, Trump and Xi were going to sit down and have a conversation. And what came out of that conversation? Right, that conversation they agreed to a halt. Right, the new tariffs, none of them were going to go into effect, and we had a a how long? How long was that halt put in effect for? Three months, March first. Right, we have a March first deadline. You guys got it. Ninety days. You guys are paying attention. I love that. Okay, so this becomes pertinent now because we had the first round of talks a couple of weeks ago. They were in Beijing. Not much came out of that, did it, right? We didn't get a lot of talk out of that. And the next round is coming up. So this brings us to why we're talking today. Next week, midweek, by the way, am I allowed to curse on here? All those in favor of me being able to curse, say yes. Aye, right? Aye, I'm seeing a lot of eyes. Next week's going to be a clusterfuck. Do you understand what I mean by that? A clusterfuck? 
we have the Fed, we have the China trade talks. It's going to be an absolute clusterfuck. I don't have a better word for it. I hate swearing, but I mean, there really isn't. So I, I, I strongly encourage you guys to temper everything you guys are feeling going in and earnings, right? So we have earnings, the Fed, and the China trade talks. Jesus Christ, guys. I mean, seriously, just shoot us now, right? This market lives from event to event. And we got a ton of it next week. So just, just, just put that in the back of your mind. But next week we have the talks are now in Washington. What I hate that's going on right now is you have all these administration officials who are talking and they're contradicting each other and they're out there making the rounds, right? You have you had a Wilbur Ross, you have Lighthouser, you have Trump himself. I mean, pick it, right? You, you guys understand what I'm talking about. They're all out there. They're all running their mouths, and none of it matters. Yeah. Every time you hear China, Victor, right, the, the Dow goes 500 points in either direction, right? Pick a direction. Depends what it is. So we're, we're kind of in the crosshairs, but we have a deadline looming of March 1st. So you guys who have been following me for a long time, you know me. Um, I tend to be bullish. I got to tell you here, I do not expect a resolution of this until when. You guys have been following me forever. What do you guys think? When do we get a resolution? They're taking a playbook from the Fed speakers. Nice one, Stan. <laughs> Victor, March 1st, right? Don't don't these type of self-imposed deadlines always go to the last minute or beyond it, right? Always, right? We never get anything done beforehand. Okay. But if there is no deal, we have a big increase in uh, the threat of, of tariffs, right? We go from 10 to 25% on the existing tariffs in the U.S., and Trump has threatened to in impose another 25% on the last $200 billion dollars. Uh, in China goods. So what's going on in China right now? Is there any good news coming out of the Chinese economy right now? Right? Everything's slowing. I hate to use the, word, the, the phrase Trump is winning, but to a certain extent he is winning, isn't he? He's, he's actually kind of got them on their heels. Now, not to say that this is not causing harm to our economy, right? And I'm not an economist, so we're not going to dive deeply into this. And I'm not the biggest Jim Cramer fan in the world. I've met him. Uh, Jim is a nice enough fellow. Um, but he did a report a week and a half ago that caught my attention. And I bring this up because I think it's pertinent. Does that make sense? So Jim said in his meetings in San Francisco with a lot of the CEOs of major tech companies, think Salesforce, think Google, think, you know, all these big guys out there, none of them would discuss China with him on camera. Did you read this? Anybody? Did anybody catch what he said? And I believe this is this is this is pertinent. You did, KM, right? He said off camera. All the executives, the CEOs, said to the to the man, they hate Trump. However, they believe what he's doing in China is the right thing, and they stand by it and willing to take the short-term pain for what they believe needs to take place for the long term. So what that really means is people like Tim Cook and all these people are telling Trump, Stick to your guns. Does that does that make sense to you guys? This it's 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 a very nuanced type thing, but they're telling him that we're okay. Stick to your guns. China needs to be reined in. So even though China is slowing and it needs this, and the United States is getting hit, most companies here in the states are telling Trump, "You're doing the right thing." I I know. For some people, that goes against everything you want to hear, and for some people, you're rooting it on. We leave politics out of this, right? For the U.S., guys, this is more of a trade about IP. What is IP? 
Anybody here not know what IP is? It's not really, David. I mean, they, these guys are looking out for themselves, um, but I appreciate it. David K., right, intellectual property, right? IP is huge here. This is a battle over intellectual property and over domination of the market. This is what's going on here. This is more than trade. So everybody thinks that this is just about trade. This is a heck of a lot more than trade at this point. This is why people like Tim Cook and all these tech guys, these big CEOs out there, are on board because they do not want China stealing their ideas and taking this stuff over. That said, China's on the rails, aren't they? All right? There has been no good economic data out of China now for the last couple of months. Yep, there's the military piece as well, although I think that is kind of brushed over a little bit. But yes, I, I do agree there is that as well. All the the um the military islands they're they're creating out there. All right. So so we have a big meeting coming up in a week and a half. Now, I do not expect a deal here. Um but Trump needs a win, China needs a win. So I expect more than last time there to be a more positive spin on this. Are you guys with me on that? I I, I find it hard to believe that we're going to walk out of this meeting and Trump's not going to be tweeting or us. Uh, what's her name? Um. Uh, the press con secretary. Why? Why is the name eluding me from uh, Trump? Uh, Huckle uh, what's her name? Not coming out with a good statement or Lighthouser or anybody coming out. Yeah, huge, right? Something's going to come out of this. There'll be a good statement. So I thought here this is a good time to talk about the China trades again because if I don't talk to you about them now, Sarah, thank you. Sarah Sanders, thank you. Sanders, Randall, thank you. I'm like drawing a blank. When am I going to talk to you guys about this? Okay, so why do we care? Nothing's changed, guys. I can go back to my last presentation. Most of the names we're going to talk about, other than one or two, have had a big sell-offs. The market will most likely try to front-run this news, right? So, you know, watch next week for a run into this, and then maybe a short after it, a short, you know, a cute short. I think you, you said it, Dave, right? Short the, the FXI, right? Cute short, because, again, I think we're waiting till March to get this deal done. All right, more head fakes, more bumps, uh, opportunity for big swing, swing trade gains, but also we have earnings coming for a lot of these companies, and this is going to make this a little bit tougher. So let's go into it. This list really hasn't changed. All right, my favorite China names remain Baba, Baidu, and JD. You know, Momo has always been strong. IQ, Hoya, and Billy. Why do we talk about them? Because they are acting better. There are recent IPOs within the last five or so months, most of them, or, or, or a year, and they're acting stronger than the rest of the names, aren't they? If you guys have been following these, they get flow. They've been moving better, right? So these are names you should be looking at. In the ETF world, you should be looking at the FXI, Asher, and the Diamonds. Why the Diamonds, guys? What makes the diamonds such an important ETF here for this? Exporters. But who are the big components? Look to your right. Who are the big components of the diamonds? MMM, Apple, Cat, Deer, Boeing, right? You got big, big, big components have huge business in China there, the industrials. So you got to watch those. So Cat. Deer, Boeing, GM, less Ford. I don't like Ford. Been stating this for a while. The only car company I like is GM. FCX, and if you want to play the casinos to me, LVS and Win are the biggest winners in China. Uh, not that I don't like MGM or Caesars because I think they have different catalysts going for them, but if you're looking for pure China trades, it's Win and LVS to me are the bigger ones. You guys with me? Okay. 
So how do you trade these guys, right? Time, time, and time. You don't want to be short-term. If you're looking to swing, you want to get as much time as you can afford. And what is afford to me or to you are two totally different things, right? Each of us has our own account size and everything. You trade appropriately. Right, David. LVS and Win bigger Macau, Macau Macau numbers, right? Than the rest of the names. That's why that's that's why they're more of a China trade. So you know you want time in your side. Go out of your money with options. Reduce your risk. Let the trade come to you. Nothing's changed there. I still think you go out of the money. Okay, but not so far that's unreasonable. You don't want to be trading so far out that you know that you're going to decay faster than the delta come up. We're not looking for a move back to all-time highs in these names. We're looking towards the 200-day or reasonable expectations. Are you guys with me on that? Right? You don't you don't want to overset your sights. Right? We're looking for realistic trades. These ideas here are not to get you into these trades, guys. These are to give you ideas on what to be looking at and to considering. You need to take your trades based upon what you like and what you don't. Not based on what I say or any other talking head out there says, right? You need to look at these with your own eyes. I'm going to give you what I'm looking at, what I'm thinking about. I may or may not take, but this is what I'm thinking. We're going to go over, David, a bunch of these right now. We're going to actually go through about five or six names right now on the charts and options I'm looking at. I'm going to give them to you very, very specifically. Like that? Okay, so first up, the FXI, right? This is the big China ETF. The last time we did this back in November, we were trading back in this range here. We got a little pop. One of you said short that, right? Came back down, and we're, we're actually right about where we were. So here we are, the March expirations. On FXI, I wouldn't go too far out. But here I look at the March 43 calls. Why? Because they're trading cheap. 60 something cents, 64 cents. They have a 0.32 delta. They're decaying at 0.01 cent a day. That is a very, 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 I'm sorry, 0.38 delta. Yeah, four, yeah, 0.32. That is a very, very nice target to buy, right? And 43 is not unreasonable here, is it? 43 is, a, is not a long shot. So, you know, the trade would be to, to 43 or maybe 4284 where the 200 day is, and then you're done, right? Does this make sense to you guys? Right? Look at the charts. Right? Here's your 200 day, 4284. We're trading down here, right? Last time we popped back in the end of November into the beginning of December, we went to 4306, right? This is your target. Now, doesn't mean you have to take it all. If you let's say to me you bought, I'm going to use an example. Let's say you bought ten of these options, right? You said, Mike, I'm buying ten of the forty-three calls, and you paid sixty-five cents, right? And you had six hundred fifty dollars worth of risk, and this thing took off next week, and you got to forty-two eighty-four. Do you have to take it all off? No, KM, right? What can you do? Scale out. Take eight. Leave two with a stop where? Fifty percent profit. Make sense? You take eight, you put the majority of the money in your pocket, you don't let the other ones go red. You put a 50%, 50 percent of your profits you get stopped out. Are you guys with me on that? Does that make sense to you guys? 4250, pick a number, whatever it is, put it in there. You could also roll up and out, right? You can roll up and out on it. Okay? But you know, never, ever, 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 when you get to a resistance spot, not take profits. Golden rule, always put money in your pocket. You can always add back to it. 
when you don't take profits, you're asking for trouble, right? Okay. If they postpone the March 1st deadline, would I roll up? I don't know, J.D. Um, you're asking me a big what if that I don't know where we'll be at when that happens. Does that make sense? I would have to very much read the markets, understand what's going on at that time. I, I, it's a fair question. It's a tough question to answer here today. Right? So if, if I thought that there was a if I thought we were close to a deal and we had popped already up into here, yes, I would roll up. I would look maybe towards the 45 strike and take my profits and go with the cheaper strike. But I would have to believe that there's a deal coming. Does that make sense? Okay, I, I would have to have to believe that. Um, yeah, I'm not trying to be mean. I just I just would have to believe that. All right, how do I get out of the drawing here on this thing? Why is it not stopping? Hmm. No. All right. You know, every time you try to do something new, sometimes it doesn't work. Okay. Okay, Baba. I haven't been trading Baba much. How many people here love Baba? I used to love trading Baba. I'll be the first person to tell you I traded Baba a ton until about six months ago. Remember when it was trying to get to 210 and it broke down and it tried to bounce back to it and it broke from there? That's probably it. Other than a, a quick, cute trade here and there, I barely trade this thing. So when you look at this chart, guys, what do you first see? Let's see. Yeah, that's better. JD, awesome. W, right? Called this out to my subscribers. I said, you can trade this W. If it breaks above the 142, it's going to run. You see my line there? It did. Gave a nice move. A lot of people made some nice money on it. I made some money on it. I actually traded part of that. Um, now it's consolidating here. The next move for me is this. You guys with me? 170, the 200 day. Okay. The options here are trading, and we're going out to April. We're buying time. The 170s are trading around 480. Now, you take less of these than others, but if this is a name you like, this is a good move. It's a 15 buck move. These things would pay nicely if it goes. You do have earnings yet, right? But this is a area I would look at. If I'm looking, if I want to swing Baba as a China name, this is definitely something I would be looking at here. Does that make sense? This is an area that has my attention. 170, where the 200-day is, also puts it close to that last high after November, right? That little pop. Okay? Make sense? Chinese New Year, yep. How about JD? Now, I actually like this name a lot here. I like this name a lot because this thing has been beaten to hell. It's had a plethora of bad news and is starting to come out of it. Now, this name's a little tougher, but we got rid of what? What did we get rid of in the last month that had been a hanging over this name? Do you guys remember? What happened down down here? What happened with the C the CEO in in Minnesota? You guys remember that? 
The CEO got um, accused of rape in Minnesota. Has since been cleared. Okay, that's a big thing off. You have a big base. What does this look like? It's a, it's a consolidation pattern down here, right? See it? Here's your 200 day. The 30s to me are too far out of the money. As much as I love it, they're too far. We're out in June. We're buying even more time because it's a cheaper name. June 28 calls. Trading under a buck. Trading around 95 cents right now. 87.50 on the close. 0.26 delta. Do you think that's possible? I do. Right? To me, honestly, right now, this thing breaks above this area, it can go. All right? You have a little resistance here, and then your next resistance is at 25, and you could be trimming and trailing the whole way. Okay? So this name looks like it's set up. Again, I'm not trying to talk you guys into these. I'm not trying to tell you to take these trades. I'm trying to give you guys ideas. This is up to you to say whether these fit your trading methodology or not, right? Why are the 29s more expensive than the – they're not. It's the market maker spreads, Mark. So look at look look what's going on here. Mark's asking a great question. He's saying, why are the 29s more expensive than the 28s? They're really, really not. Look what's going on here today. There was 402 28s traded today. How many 29s were traded today? Zero. So what do the market makers do? There's no market. They spread the options, right? You want to buy them, sure, they'll sell them to you, but they're going to do what? They're going to stick it up your what? Jack up the price. They're going to stick it to your what? What are they going to do? They're going to stick it in your what? Right? Because they can. Because they can. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to, yeah, right? They're exactly, Randall, what the CEO did. So, you know, so that's why, Mark. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's a liquid. It's an illiquid. It's a liquid there. You never want to be doing that. If you see this, you do not buy. You do not buy. You just say, no, no, no. You go to the next strike or somewhere else. You do not set the market ever, 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 ever. I did it once. Boy, was that a mistake. I learned my lesson the hard way. <laughs> Same with selling. You got it. Yeah, exactly, Victor. <laughs> Exactly. So I like JD. And if you want to play a cheaper name and have more time, JD is the best, is one of the better ones for it. Oh, Ciro, I do set limit orders and see if they'll accept it. What happens is they don't. It'll sit out there and it'll sit out there and it'll sit out there forever until you meet their price. Okay. Cat. Another name. Now, what does Cat have in the way here on Monday morning? Yeah, sucker order. Earnings, right? So this is a little bit of a danger, right? So this is not something I'd be looking at tomorrow for sure. What do we know about CAT? Here, what can we expect to hear out of CAT on Monday? What are, they, what are they a great bellwether company for? China. JD, China order slowing. China, right? They are really good at forecasting what's going on in China. Now, last time we talked about this, the 200-day was higher. The 200-day has come down. It's at 139 now. Assuming all things being equal and that after Monday, CAT is flat. For whatever reason, let's say it's trading around 130 in the 130s, right, around here. Look at the May options, the 150 calls, because – it gets to the 100 day, 150 bucks is nothing to Caterpillar, right? This is not a big move. And these things are relatively will be cheaper. Because what's going to happen to these options after Monday, guys? A 
Christopher, I don't trade earnings anymore, ever. You got it right. JD, KM, everybody, Vol Trust, right? This is going to drop. These will be cheaper if it doesn't move, okay? But again, I like May, again, buying time, and I like the 150 strike, all things being equal here, right? Make sense? I don't know where we're going to be on Monday after earnings, but this is what I like. Okay, so for the last two weeks, I've been being peppered about Ford, 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 and Tesla, Tesla, Tesla. Guys, this is the company to own. Look at this chart. Does this chart not look nice here? Go to one year on GM. This is GM on a one year chart. Does this chart look really bad to you guys? I'm not seeing a lot of responses here. Are you guys following me? What I'm saying? Look at Ford. Is this a stock you want to own? Do you want to own this? Okay. How about this monstrosity, which is surrounded by bad news? Do you want to own this? Do you want to own Tesla? Puts. Yep, puts. How about this one? Does this look like a chart you want to own? So, let's go back to GM. I like this name. I like what's going on with them. This is the one automaker. If you want an automaker, this is the one I would want. Okay? I'm not trying to sell you guys on this. I'm trying to just say that this is the one that's acting much better than the rest. We have... Okay, yep, short-term traders come all. I agree with you. But you have earnings coming. You have a nice flag up here after a big gap up above all the moving averages, right? Consolidating a gap and move. When you see something like this, how do you feel? Isn't this what you want? Big gap, hasn't even touched it, and doing what? Consolidating, flagging. Not necessarily. We've seen, you know, if, if this is strong, if this is really strong, it won't retest it, David. All right, yep, you have a possible double top developing, but, you know, double tops are double tops until they get broken, right? Right, Mark? Double tops are only double tops until they get broken and until, until they're not. Same thing. Anytime we talk bottoms, is they are what they are. So, again, all I'm saying that if I'm going to own a car name for a China play, this is the guy, this is the company I want to earn after earnings, after earnings. Yes, exactly, after earnings. And for me, look how cheap, even with earnings coming, the June, June 42s are. Look how cheap these things are. They're cheap. Okay, they're cheap. You got to love that. So, again, if you want to play a, a name for China in the auto space, tonight's not about telling you what to buy, guys, right? It's giving you ideas. You pick what you like or don't like based upon your trading styles, right? Yeah, Tesla options would be 10 times. No, Tesla options on, on a June strike would probably be 20 times that. Those things are ridiculous, David. Ridiculously priced. Okay. Yep. 
One more. Let's go to a casino. GM is a beautiful chart. I like GM. I like their, what they're doing with the electric cars. They're taking, their, you know, they're they're taking on Tesla. Let's talk win. Okay. So, win is the ultimate China casino place, right? Yeah, David, I love hate it too. I've actually made good money on the last month and a half, scalping it with options in and out of it on a quick basis. But when is why is when is the ultimate China play? They have what? What makes them the biggest China play in the casino space? Right, Macau. You got it, Robert. They have the largest exposure to Macau. Now, this this name was trading how much a year ago? Where was this trading at? Anybody remember? Yeah, almost two hundred. I think it actually got over two hundred at one point, but maybe not. Now you're right. Almost two hundred. Okay, what happened here? What happened to it? it you had. China and and Steve Wynn himself, right? Exactly, the philandering. Now, when you look at this chart, what do you see here? You see a W, guys. This is what I try to do with my subscribers, by the way, on a daily basis. So if you guys are asking me what we do, we look for this option flow and charts. You have a Double bottom, you have a W, right? You guys can all see this, right? It's working its way up. Here's your midpoint. It clears 122.50. What happens? And holds it. You have an, a potential explosive move, okay? Right, so we know this now. They finally announced earnings. The one thing I hate about Win is, for whatever reason, they always, always wait to the last minute for earnings to announce it. So earnings are next week. I'm looking right now, today, based upon where it's at today. Right, you guys are with me. I'm looking at the June calls. I'm buying a ton of time. Why? Because this name, you got God knows you need time in this name. Uh, I, all my losses have come from not buying enough time on this name, right? I'm looking at the June 140 calls right now that are trading around 420. 20, okay, got a 26 delta 0.30, and 140 is still shy of the 200 day. And honestly, 140, if it breaks above 122, this thing can move 10 to 15 bucks a day when it wants to, right? So. We're not talking a big ass move, right? Put it in perspective. This name can fly when it gets momentum going. So, this is some name. So, I hope what I've done here tonight for you guys is giving you some ideas in different names, sectors, and an ETF you guys can take a look at and 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 try, and just say you don't have to do anything right away. What you should do. I'm going to record this. I'll repost it again on my public Twitter feed for you guys. And write this down and say, I'm interested in this and pick a spot where you want to buy it if you want to get into it. Does that make sense? Uh, Jim, what's the minimum delta? There is no such thing as a minimum delta. That's a great, great, great question. I buy delta based upon how far the stock can move on the ATR. On a JD, which doesn't move a dot more than doesn't move a buck a day, I want higher delta versus a Win or a Google or an Amazon, right? That can move like Amazon moves a hundred bucks a day. I'll take I'll take a point ten delta on that damn thing. Does, are you with me? So it really depends upon the name. So there is no necessary delta. It's looking for that sweet spot where my risk reward is in the right spot. Does that, does that make sense? If the chain is, what happens if the chain is five 
dollars a strike. Do you skip? Victor, I'm not sure I'm following you. You mean a five dollar spread on the options? Yeah, I absolutely would skip that. If if the options are spread wild and loose, I would not touch them. I'd look to something else. I would move up or down depending upon what I need to do, and I would adjust my size accordingly to get the dollars where I need them to be. I tend to only play puts and calls. I don't tend to play spreads, Jim. They, What I hate about spreads, I know some of you guys love spreads, and um, I have a guy in my service, and I've been working with him. He used to do a lot of spreads, and he was struggling. Spreads give you a very so, uh, false sense of security, right? They tend to, and they have more moving parts. And I've been telling them the problem is you get into spreads, and you feel like you're protected to the downside, but you're really not because that spread only really protects you so much when it really starts to come in unless you have the discipline to get out of it. Does that make sense? Spreads are hard to manage. For me, I'd rather buy straight puts or calls and put my profit stop in place. But everybody to your own. Trade how you want accordingly. All right. So my final thoughts on China. First off, pick the names you like. Don't pick a name because Mike said to pick it or some other talking head said to take it. Do your evaluation. Pick names you like. Pick names you know better. Okay? Um, Jim, on options, I generally put a stop depending on them. Sometimes it's 50%. Sometimes it's more or less depending upon where they are and how far out they are in time. Take your account into size. If you have a smaller account, make sure your your size doesn't overspread. That you know, buying this doesn't make your account in danger of blowing up. Remember, names like Baba are much more volatile and pricier than a name like Cat. Size accordingly. Yep, WB is another name if you like it. Time is your friend, and undoubtedly. No matter what happens between now and March 1st, there will be setbacks, there will be up, move forward, and stuff like that. Uh, Jim, if you have questions, reach out to me directly on Twitter, uh, at Options Mike, and I'll be happy to answer them for you or offer you a class if you're interested in on how I do things and why I do it, if you're really interested in learning that. I'm not here to try to sell you. I'm just give, giving you that option. Do you guys have any questions on the China trace tonight as we've gone over it here? We only got 15 minutes left, and I have a couple more things I want to go over with you. Best place to get China news? Um, I get it off of my news feeds uh, on stuff I buy. So either Trader Exchange or Benzinger or The Fly. All those three work for me. When I get it, I post it for you guys on my private Twitter feed who are in my service. Okay, let's go into sentiment here because I think this is important here. Um, I told my subscribers I'm getting very bullish on this market. Take it for what it's worth. First of all, fear and greed index was, was trading by December 26th at zero is up to 58. Okay, we're not hot. We're not bad. We're coming up. Okay, how much of my portfolio would I balance with China outcome, Stan? I would make sure each trade is no more than 5% of my portfolio. And I would not put more than 30% of my portfolio into it, Stan. How's that for a, a quick off-the-cuff answer? I don't know, Kamal, when this gets approved. I really don't. I think it'll go right to the wire March 1st, maybe beyond if they extend it. All right, so the fear and greed index is in our favor. This is what's getting really interesting to me. The stock twist sentiment. Remember, stock twist sentiment is retail, right? These are you and me. Notice here what's going on. And this is what I love, right? We're coming As the market's been going up, what are we doing? Look at the IWM. What are we doing here? 
What's been going on as the market's been rallying? Well, it's well, not selling. Sentiment is going down, right? Mark, not 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 selling. Sentiment's going down. That means retail investors are getting bearish, right? What is what is what are one thing we always almost always know? What do we know about retail investors? What's almost always the case? We all worry, right? But they're almost always wrong. They're almost la almost always last into a rally and and uh and 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 first to you know right they're almost last right they're always opposite right so this to me says that retail's getting it potentially going the wrong way last in last out always losing you got it right okay the oscillators now oscillators have not been our friends now for the last couple of weeks i've been very very vocal about this what i do say to you guys about the oscillators all the time is they are part of the puzzle but not the ultimate decision maker right so the oscillator here we've been we went from screaming oversold at the end of the year to screaming overbought and have been stuck up here forever um so we've been stuck up here Finally, we started cooling off into the 150s, and we're back to 180 today. This is much better. Okay, this makes me a happy, happy camper here at this point. The Neymot, which tracks the Nasdaq, is even cooler. Now, why is this cooler, guys? What's the big name that's been getting beat up in this sector that's really holding it down? Neymot tracks the, tracks the Nasdaq. Apple, you got it, Victor. Right. So this is even better. Apple. Right. Notice how the markets detach itself from Apple, by the way, over the last couple of sessions. Apple's going down. The markets aren't necessarily going down with it anymore. Right. The market's starting to detach itself from it. This is good. Uh, KM, what industrials do you think it bounce with the uh, resolution of the government shutdown? I think we get an overall general bounce, KM. On the industrial side, I'd be looking at um, I'd be looking actually at some of the airlines because they're the ones that have been most vocal about the pain of it right and if i'm going to go to an airline i'm going to go to the, the the one that's been acting the best and you know which one that is starts with a u ends with an l you got it united i'm just saying i i i i i, I don't love the airlines but if i'm going to trade one i'm going to go with the one that's been acting better than the rest does that make sense I'm not going to screw around with the ones that are, are struggling or not trading well. United has been acting better, UAL. Um, that's where I would go. So the Neymot, right? These all cooled off. All right. The SPY. I got to tell you this, guys. I love this consolidation. I went over this with my people in my service today. We did our subscriber over only webinar. The last couple of times we got these push candles like this. What did we do right afterwards? We sold. We sold. We sold. Right? What are we doing here? What's the difference? Consolidating, Mark. Not holding. It's not a bad word. We're consolidating. You love when markets consolidate. We're holding the 8 and the 50 day, right? We're holding 260. We're consolidating here. Isn't this what we want? Isn't this the action we want? The market goes up. The market gets a little hot. And instead of selling off, it consolidates instead and goes sideways on low volume. Isn't that what we want more than anything else? And here, look at the volume today. Look at how low the volume is today. Right? This is this is what we want, guys. RSI's got room to run, right? We have room to run. My next target is 270, and then we see. But this is what you want in a market. You don't want these, you know, in the, with this. This is exactly what you're looking for. Okay? The VIX, 
I told everybody, you know, I was on TD Ameritrade Network on TV. And uh, this was that. And I told Oliver, I remember we had the conversation. And we were, he's like, what? And I'm like, if we get below 16, you got risk on. I'm sorry, 26, it's risk on. We broke 26. And I said, then we have to hold, si then 16 is your next fixed level. We haven't gotten to 16 yet, right? You can see this. Just, just haven't gotten there yet. We will, you know, this is it, big. If we come down, 16 is your big level. If we hold 16, it means they're going to keep volatility afloat in this market. If we break 16, it, it means we're trying to go back to a low volatility market. Very, very plain and simple. I kind of expect we'll hold it, but once we got below 26, it was a little bit more risk on. You can see the, the, the break here. We Once we got back below that breakout, okay, the QQQs, because I'm running low on time, and I know I've been talking a lot tonight, guys, and I'm, I'm sorry for that, but I, I'd rather talk and help you guys than not. Same thing. A little weaker than the other indexes because of Apple, but waiting on earnings, right? We've had bank earnings. We've had some, some, you know, some chip earnings, but we really – the one thing about earnings this period is earnings is very diffused. We're not getting the big waves of everything. Oh, you're welcome, KM. Thank you. All right? Everything's kind of diffused. We're not getting the big waves. Like, you know, usually we have a couple, two big weeks of earnings. We have about a month of very big earnings, but everything's diffused through at this time. So next week we're getting Apple and we're getting Amazon and Facebook. So we got three big tech names next week. So next week's going to be big. So we'll keep an eye on the queues and see if they want to run into that. Okay. Again, nice position, nice consolidation here, holding in well. It's, you know what? I'm a big fan of what Warren Buffett and Trump said of moving to twice a year earnings. I, I'm t I don't think we need to have earnings every every three months. I really don't. But, you know, <laughs> this is what we have to deal with, and this is what we choose to do, so we, we accept it, right? The IWM has been leading in both directions. It led us down. And it's led us back up and it's consolidating nicely here. And it's already tested a key level for me, right? And holding well. Again, I'm looking at this and saying, this looks good to me, guys. The markets look good here. And so, you know, this is where I say to you guys, I am bullish on the markets. We have earnings. We have the shutdown. We have China talks. But I think they can all be catalysts to the upside as well. And, um, you know, you could ask anybody in my service. You can tweet to me publicly. I have not been thinking short all week. I've been trading long all week. The last couple of weeks, I've traded back and forth long and short. I have not even looked at shorts this week because, honestly, I just think this market is looking for long names here. It's looking to be long here at this point. Oil, uh, oil stuff, Cheaton. Um, oil is also dependent upon China. Okay, so what's going on with crude is that um, we'll just use USO as for us. How's that as, as a proxy? China is the number two world's largest economy. It's also the biggest importer of oil in the world. And if that economy is slowing, they're going to have you know, it's bad for oil. So that you've been seeing constant conduct uh, production cuts. But when you look at this chart, what do you see here? Mm, okay, a V bottom. I'll buy that. What else do you see? Ah, come on, guys. Mm, okay, looks like the spy. Mm, a little bit different. You guys are missing it. What pattern do you see? What pattern? Forget the RSI. Look at the bottom. What pattern do you see? Not a head and shoulders, Mark, but a what? Inverted. Inverted. There you guys go. Inverted. Left shoulder, head, right shoulder, right? Something to watch. Now, we had oil numbers today. They were horrific. Big builds. But if it doesn't dump, and it holds this area, right? So as long as it holds around 1070 on the USO, and I don't, I'm not putting this in oil. We'll see. But this is this is what I see in oil. So you know, um, what I do know is that 
OPEC and Saudi are very committed to trying to pump oil back up towards um, 80 bucks a barrel. So they keep cutting production to try to get it there. Somebody asked me about Amazon going into tomorrow. Um, so what I can tell you about Amazon is on Fridays, I think nine out of the last 11 Fridays, it's been down at the end of the day above where it opened. Uh, who asked me that? I think it was you. Uh, I forget who asked me on. I just asked me on Amazon. Um, it's been a tough Friday trade, Deborah. That's what I know. Does that make sense? It it just hasn't been easy trade. It's it tends to dump into the end of the day, especially that last hour, for whatever reason. We have earnings next week. There's a lot of people that think that the divorce pending between um, the Bezos is going to be bad for the stock. I don't know. I know this going into next week. I won't be touching it because IV's jacked and the options are untouchable. Secondly, I um, they've missed two quarters in a row. If they miss this time, it's going to be really, 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 really bad. Okay? If they miss on revenue three quarters in a row, look out because I don't think Wall Street's going to give them a pass again. Oh, she dumps half her shares. Yep. All right, guys. I want to thank everybody for joining me tonight. Um, I love doing these webinars. I don't know when my next one is, but it'll be one coming up soon. Again, if you want to get a hold of me, you can get me on Twitter, at Options Mike. And if you have any questions, reach out to me. Tomorrow's Friday. I wish you guys a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend. And you know what? Again, take these ideas, guys. Thoughts to put in your head. Look at it. You can say I'm nuts. I get that a lot. <laughs> but if you like it, take an eye. Try something small, right? Thank you, Randall. I'm nuts. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, CNBC, I, I can't stand them much anymore. Everybody have a wonderful night, a wonderful weekend, and I'll catch you guys soon. Thank you very much for joining me tonight. Take care, guys.